2019, Warrington Board of Aldermen into session. If uh, first is the public hearings for the application for the fiscal year 2019 Community Development Block Grant program. Uh, Mr. Egan, I believe you're here to speak to us. If you would come to the podium, say your name, and we'll give you time to talk. Do I have to hit? No, it's automatic. No, no, it's automatic now. Thank you. Automatic now. Excellent. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, members of the board, thank you very much for the opportunity to come here. I'll be the facilitator for the public hearing tonight. And this is a required action to apply for grant funds for community development block grant in the state of Missouri. It is a needs assessment for the community, even though the grant itself will be through the city on behalf of Agape. So the city has to complete this portion. You should have received a copy of a former needs assessment that was completed. And if it's all right with you all, if we could go through the list and if anything's changed, or if you want to add something different, we could go through section by section that way. If you've had a chance to, to review those. So this is, a, this is from the downtown project that was completed. So when you answer these questions, is it relative to the city in, in general, or is it relative to the location, or? It's the city in general. City in general. Okay. So on Section A, Public Works, there are several that are fair and poor. Have those changed at all that need to be upgraded, or are they pretty much the same as they were? Before we start this, are you wanting one of us to fill this out, or are you wanting us all individually? Well, we usually do it as a group. How about, let me give this to Public Works. Oh, sure. Answer those questions. Hey, Chad. 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 Um, Chris Greville, the city attorney. Yes. Do we need to have a sign-in sheet for everybody that's in attendance? Is it already out there? It's okay. out there. Yes. Okay. Do you want the board to sign it as well? We don't need the board to sign it. If we could just get a copy of it, that's all we need. So we would like to have a copy of the draft minutes and agenda from this to go with it. This is really extensive. Well, I understand that, but... No, I mean, yeah. well, but I mean, some of these voice. we have to rely on staffing. Well, yes, is, that's. We'd say marvelous on everything, wouldn't we? Well, sure, sure we would. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, there's. Except for the landfill. Well, that. You know, there's no landfill here. That's a pretty easy one, right? Well, that is an easy one, but we have two, three, four and pages no get natural here gas. to. And I wasn't sure about the water treatment, if that was because the Public Water Supply District took care of that, so that it did not exist last time. This was 2004. The city has its own water. We got wells. We don't have, we don't. Okay. Because it depends on the classification of what you're asking for the water treatment. So we don't have water treatment. We have wells. We have water we have wells. That's not treatment. Okay. So that would be a plan. I would say we have a good water source. Sure, how why water distribution? Yeah, why so those were marked. That's good. I don't. I mean, yeah, jump I in here whenever good. you need to. The first, the next three. Next three, good. Yes. I mean, would you consider that as well? Absolutely. Are there improvements to the storm sewer collection? Recently. We don't handle storm sewer. We could do that project. Yeah, we we do. Just storm. Yes, there's been improvements in that yeah. with engineering and some work being yeah, done. because it was marked poor before. Yeah. Is it a fair now? Storm sewer system or maintenance uh, okay. program. Okay. So, but we have we do have some storm sewer projects that we do. Yes. That's probably why they marked it as poor then. Those look okay to you all? Chris, do you want to copy this? So yeah, can I see that? Sure. We're probably right back to that. But we yeah. think sidewalks are not poor, are they? The railroad and the downtown, oh, same okay. time frame. Guys, let's let's kind of hold up for a minute. There's a lot of people talking about a lot of different things, and I think there's some of them that are a little lost in where we're at. We need to be clarify, we have clarification of where we're at, what we're talking about, and where we're checking. 
Um, otherwise, you're going to have about five different or four different types of checks throughout this whole thing, and you're not going to have a clear-cut answer from the board, I can tell you that. Okay, okay. Please. So, let's start back over with water source. I believe we decided on a good rating. Water treatment, I believe we checked, does not exist. The <coughs> water distribution, we click checked good. The water or sanitary sewer treatment, good. And the sanitary sewer collection, good. Now, storm sewer collection, where do we stand on that, Chris? I mean, we don't have a system, so I would keep it at poor. Or does not exist. Poor. 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 Their drainage? Uh, same, same thing. We don't have a system or a maintenance program. Or, Chad, you can go ahead and take it back over. Okay. I just wanted to get a sure. set of speed. Uh, streets and drainage. Fair. Street overview, fair. Fair, sound good for everyone? Okay. <coughs> we have some areas improved. Bridges. You don't really have a lot of bridges, but I know you have a brand new one. <laughs> so, um, that'll be good. At least fair or good for bridges. That ain't our bridge. Oh, okay. The only bridge that I would say would be ours, and even at that is the walk. The yeah, the, the walk walkway bridges. bridge. The walk bridge. Oh, right. We do a one down there. Um, there again. Good job. Yeah. There is there is one down in Pickney. Um, yeah, and Middletown Road. I'd say at least fair, if not good. Correct. I, I, I would be comfortable with fair. Okay. Fair, okay. Sidewalks, I know you've made a lot of improvements to the sidewalks. I know there are still some issues in town, but you are addressing them with uh, engineering study right now. But are, are you still at a poor for sidewalks, you I think, or fair? I, I think what we have in place is good. I know there's upgrades. If you're asking okay. sidewalks that are in place or sidewalks in general that need to be added, well, and I think the existing, some of the existing, existing need to be fixed it, as well. I, so I think the existing is good. You would? Yes. Good or fair? <laughs> good? Okay. Parks and Recreation, I know you've had several improvements there too. Is that a fair or a good? Yeah, I'd listen as good. Good? Okay. Obviously no landfill, so it does not exist. Electric? Gen uh, generation or distribution? I didn't believe that you had electric distribution here, so I, I'm not sure why that was good. I would think that's a does not it's, exist. It depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking for generators through the facility, uh, I would say it's good. Okay. Because we have lift stations as well with generators, and we have a generator here on site. Yeah, I guess by definition, if you're looking for independent gen uh, distribution, we don't have a center that's okay. independent distribution. So I, I guess for clarification, what are you looking for? Typically, when we filled these out, it was if they were their own municipality utility and made their own electricity. So, we, it doesn't so, no, exist. Which you don't. Right. So, does not exist. Correct. Natural gas also does not exist. Okay. Oh, wait. So, on sanitary or storm sewer collection, let's put does not exist on that. Is that a pour? Yeah. Mix it out and initial it. Storm sewer collection. Okay. Was what? Uh, we we checked it as poor. poor. The attorney was requesting that we initial exit out initial, and then check at the storm sewer collection as does not exist or doesn't exist. Okay. Public services. Section as an independent city. We in the city. We don't have. Yeah, it's. It is, the, it is the warrant and fire district, but they're independent on their own. But as a service, are you happy with your fire protection service? Two of them. You think it's good? Police? <coughs> Suspect? I mean, good. He's saying next to you should probably say great. Well, it's all right. Trust He's me, if there's a category for attorney, I'm sure I'll hear it back from you. No, no. <laughs> I believe the chief just smiled and said, you have to drive home tonight. So <laughs> we'll see how good. Definitely be good. Code enforcement? 
planning and zoning. Good. Good. Energy <coughs> conservation. Good. Good. And what are you looking for in that area? It's very general. That we work with people who yes. want to put things that we, we do work with people. You try to improve things. You put in LED lights, things like that. Sort of energy. Yeah, we we. I, I don't know if we have like whatever star rating, but I know. Guy, what would you think? Well, all the street lights were going to LED, so. Good. They good. Huh? <laughs> healthcare. Good. These are subjective questions. I know they are, but. Healthcare. I know it was listed as fair, and you know there are no hospitals here. There are several clinics. There's no urgent care necessarily that's open after there 5 p.m. Oh, there is. Uh, not after 5 p.m. Not after 5 p.m. So. I can see Open where that would be land. fair to poor for health care in, in the city. If that's okay fair. for fair. Let's say fair. Fair, as okay. To poor. Uh, this, had, this had fair for recreational activities. This is before the aquatic center and things like that were put in. Improvements were made to the parks. Uh, I, I, I mean, I can see that as good. If that's all right with you all. Snow removal. Okay. Good with snow removal. Street cleaning, park maintenance. Emergency medical, trash removal, those all seem good. I don't think there'd be any changes there. Sidewalks, they were poor. Uh, we've said good above, so good for sidewalks as well. Parking, I don't know why they knocked down parking to fair, but it seems like there is a lot of parking in the community. Unless you want to keep There's it as... Chance, right? I, yeah, I, mark fair. I disagree. <laughs> I don't I'd think parking is good. I, I think parking... Or you would. do snow. I'd, fair? I'd mark fair. We're working on it. There's yeah. some ideas we have. Yeah. We're trying to work through that. So okay. I'd, I'd say fair. Fair. Fair? Fair, fair for parking. Yeah. Next section, C. Community center. <clears throat> Still doesn't exist. You don't classify the aquatic center as a community center, so no. good there. Senior center, do you have one here in town? Do. Fair, okay, or? Do a good job. Okay. I don't good or fair. I left it a fair. You want to put it a good? I think fair. It's fair. fair. It's not poor. Yes. No, it is not poor. Historic preservation, I'd almost have to go with good because they've added the hall onto it and they've done lots of lectures. Okay. And they've been even trying to include events like okay. plays. Sheltered workshop. Okay. Hospital non existent. Daycare. Seems good. I think it is good. We have several daycare facilities, and um, okay. I would say good. Mental health, counseling, several places have opened up here too. Good there. Oh, good. Senior citizen transportation. Got two forms of it. Oh. The regularly. only the only part that I can say that's not good is there's nothing probably in the community if they're here. There are uh, to and from rides with oats, but there's no transit necessarily in town. But they could get around with oats, so. Fair, fair is probably a good answer. Um, teen and youth center. It's not exist. Not exist. Okay. Uh, drug abuse, crime prevention. Good. Good. Fair. I know there's subjective questions. Well, we I believe we have two two different. Or three different organizations doing drug abuse prevention or rehabilitation okay. through the former bridgeway i think it through emas they provide classes as well okay. so i would have to say either good or fair for at least that You're okay with good yeah. I'm crime okay. prevention. well i guess the other thing i was thinking on the, re the rehab is some of the church we almost have like a handful of organizations providing some Okay. Not saying that it's making a huge impact, but it is. I, I guess that's where I guess that's people. where I'm coming from. I, no, I understand. I don't where you're see here. the impact that we would like to see in that regard. I'm just. Uh, I guess I'm going under the label of community facilities. Whether I'm seeing sure. that. Yes. Right. Do they have the facility uh, options? Right. Uh, 
no community theater that I know of, so still does not exist. And library, very good. Good. Excellent. Very good. Brand new. Okay. <laughs> Brand new extension. Uh, the next section, housing. This is something that we typically use the census data, and that's where those numbers came from. So we would like to use the census data, if that's all right with you all, to complete those. Okay. The next section is E, housing. And again, this is um, the subjective questions, but uh, duplexes for rent. Good. good. So now oh, well, it's a low high. So yeah, they one, changed three, it. Four, so five. high is a five. Four, five. five is three or four? I'd say four. four. Okay. <laughs> Medium to large apartments, two bedrooms plus. It was a two. Is it a three or a four? It'd be a two. Two still. Okay. Low price single family homes under 40000 Wow. <laughs> it's a two. I it was just saying printed. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still a two there, yeah? A one? Yeah. You switch it to a one? Uh, yeah. I think that's a one. Okay. Medium price, 40 to 90. Is that a two still? Two. I would say yes. Okay. Yes to what, Mike? Two. The two. Two, two. Okay. okay. High price, over 90,000. Options. Probably. Add a three. Probably four. Yeah, I'd four. say four. Okay. Excellent. Community health, and again, this is the environment that you that you have here in the community. So, primary care physicians, this is one to five. It was a three. Primary cares, so I'd say three or four. That's midway. Three or four. You know, there are new physicians coming in all the time to SSM, four. and okay. yeah, I, I think four. And then, what about specialist? This was marked down last time, so you have to go yeah. probably somewhere else for a special. Only have so much individual. Got them coming in and out. Some of them are here two days a week, okay. et cetera, et cetera. So I'd probably not get one more down three. Yeah, about three. A three. Okay. Walk-in clinics. I know there are several clinics. I don't. It was a two. Is it? Is it improved in the last ten years to a three? Probably. Yeah. No, it has. Okay. So three. Three. Mobile clinics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it actually. No oh, mobiles. Still a two, uh -huh. probably for mobile clinics. Uh, that's what. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Can we go back for just sure. a second? What where Where are walk-in clinics? Walk-in clinics SSM. would be like an urgent care. That's so we not right. one. We do have one over in town and country, which is an actual uh, urgent across care. Across the highway. It's a walk-in. That is a walk-in. Walk Mercy yeah. Yeah. is a walk-in. Yes, it is. They in, take in the uh, morning. So, so we have. You're looking at a different level as well. Um, I think they consider walk-in clinic being the uh, pregnancy option center is also one for people who believe they're pregnant or are dealing or struggling with it. They can get health care options inside there for a walk-in. They don't have to schedule appointments. So I mean, there are some here. There may not be a lot, but there are a couple that have popped okay. up since. I mean, it's, it's up to you guys. This you is want to stay with a two, we can stay thing. with a two. We're not comfortable with that. We can stick with two. But it's, I would say there's more than back in 2004 when we did this last. I won't go any higher. Not that there okay. are more. Okay. Mobile clinics. Three. 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 Uh, three for walk-in. Okay. So mobile had a two. Still a two or a one? I would say two or one. I don't know of any mobile clinics that come in anymore, except for like eye exam, maybe in dental. Mammography. Yeah, they do have those. You're right. But still, I think it's two. It's, yeah, it's not two? frequent, but yes. they still do come once a year. Okay. Yes. Dentist was a three. Yes, Kreider has several. One on Steinhagen, been here for a while. North 47 has one 47. Well. I think we got tons on, on that dentistry. Maybe a four then for dentist? Um, or just a three? Let's stick with three. I three? go with three. Okay. Home Which care services? Still arise. I'm, I'm out of my league on that one. Do you have hospice? Do you have other... Do you have hospice? Coming into the home? 
home those health wheels and all that, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Home they, health services. They have three. Three. Okay. Licensed child care. No, in the in the previous one, it was good. Be good. So I would, yes. probably a three still Safe. for that. Three or four. What do you think four? Because the majority of them that are that have a lot of kids are licensed facilities. We go by state regulations, but we also make sure that they are following the state codes sure. whenever we do that. So um, I'd agree with you. Youth and elderly services, this was a two. And I know you didn't have a youth center and fair for the elderly, so probably a two still for that one. I think one. the elderly centers have. The, the, Elderly centers kind of picked up on what they're doing. They're doing more coffees with veterans and what be it, and they host okay. a lot more than what they used to. They've really gotten involved in the programs. Okay. So I'd almost bump it up to a three for at least the elderly program. Who else can speak up at any time? Two or three. Okay. Three? Okay. Substance abuse programs. There again. I mean, there's there's at least a handful, not more. Okay. I'd say a three. Three for that as well. Patient transportation. Ambulances here. Uh, they could call OATS. They could call dialysis. And there are a lot. Have a lot of options for and transportation. Fire starting to respond with the EMS. So. Yeah, you're right. They don't. You want to I'd, stay with the three? I'd stay with the three. Three for that. And what about EMS 911? Still, well, still a is three that or? ambulance service or is that 911? Is what? What's that? Number 11. The, uh, the EMS 911. They, I mean, nine, the dispatchers do consider themselves emergency emergency management. So this is 911, sir. I would agree. Okay. Yeah. So three or four? Three. Hey, four. I say four. 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 Yes. four. Okay. Education profile, preschools, it was a two. Can we go back to number 10 real quick on patient sure. transport services? We rated we a three, but I do want to comment. Um, Tim and Ralph worked really hard getting a couple other bases to be able to respond to both sides of town. So, I mean, that, that really enabled us. They get quicker to the south side of town now that they've added that base. It's down a little bit further. I'd almost say let's let's beef them up a little bit to a four i mean they, they worked really hard to get that yeah, they done, do. you know so to give them a little bit of credit of where they're I at i'd say they, they respond a lot quicker than what they used to four for ten i would mm -hmm. okay number one preschools education it was a two there's at least <laughs> rely on you guys i don't know Maybe just a handful, but is there, does the, the school district has preschool too now? Right. We've added some. So that's been changed, that's changed since this was done. That has changed. The early, early development, they added um, more space and down there, so yeah, I'd say three. Three? Three. Okay. Public schools, was a three. About the same? Yeah. Leave it at a three. Okay. Private schools. A couple we, options for private since schools. Since 2004, we dropped Westland. Well, Westland's still doing it. They're just not doing it at the high school. So, yeah. Well, I'd still leave stay it at three. Stay with the three there? I'd leave it at three. Okay. Vocational schools. Not really anything here, so still no. keep it as a one. Community colleges, nothing here. Keep it at a one. Universities, nothing here. Keep it at a one. Continuing education. Some, but not much. Keep it at a one or go to a two? Keep it at a one, I one, guess. One. One. Okay. Uh, Employer-based skills training. It was a three. The employers, I know, call other groups to come there in. Anything you can tell us of why it was based at a three at that time? I think it was the state technical college and other entities like that that would come in and train the workers. So SAF Holland, they do their own training and things like that. They call people in for it. So it's available to the workers. Um, it's not a, it's not a public, it's not really a public. 
option. It's employer. But it's employer based, so. Why they did it three? I'd yep. Leave it at three. School business partnerships. At eight, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Three for eight. School business partnerships. Was a three. About the same. Okay. Uh, shared facilities for the school. I know that they have the commons that are open. Um, I don't know if you can go to their library necessarily or have the needs since Scenic is here, but it was a three. Does that seem mm -hmm. adequate still? Entrepreneurship training. I know this was a three, but it really seems like a one, in, in my opinion. I don't really Excuse see me. a lot of options for entrepreneurship. Oh. Here. Does, does the EDC... They have somewhat of a youth uh, or young, young, um, young entrepreneurs group that met a couple of times. I don't know if it's an entrepreneurship, really a training program. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if, it's, if it's been an ongoing, but you're right. I know they've, they've sporadic. They've, yeah, they've addressed it and tried. Going, but we'll drop it down. Okay. Two or one. Two. Still something. Children's groups, They're several scout troops, 4-H is Four available H is too. 4-H is very strong, <coughs> FFA, okay. uh, FFA strong, I don't want to say three. Three or four? Give it a three. Three, okay. Next section, economic development. We were just going to pull the local data from the past uh, 3.24% uh, unemployment for the county. You just write that down or are you guys no, just going to plug we, it we've in? we've got both of those. <coughs> Same with the workforce and the predominant job skills. I, I think we left it at non-skilled. They're not high-skilled necessarily jobs overall. There are several high-skilled jobs here, but as a general question, overall non-skilled Because we don't have any skilled workers. True. <clears throat> uh, education level, we left it at high school. There's, there's no, you know, they, they, I believe it was about 47% went to two-year or four-year school after high school as a percentage. So leave it at high school. Based on your percentage, I don't think there's any reasoning why we've done any type of homework on that. This is one thing I know that they don't update the forms, but the enterprise zone, that, that's old. There is an enhanced enterprise zone, but that's not the question. The question is, do they have an enterprise zone in the community? No, you don't have an enterprise zone. You have an enhanced enterprise zone. So according to the way the question's worded, no, no is still appropriate for the enterprise zone. Um, and there's no need for an enterprise zone because they have an enhanced enterprise zone now. So. They're not going to go back to an enterprise zone at the state level, so no to that one as well. An industrial park is yes, obviously. It's public. That's also a yes. Industrial park, how are we taking yes? Uh, You're stating yes for the city of Warrington. It's a city. Where? It's on the I, Well, I guess they're considering the Bruni Park area. Talking about, talking about the old the industrial, old park. industrial park. park. In Truesdale. Yeah. In Truesdale. <laughs> yeah, that of, used to be ours. Part of it's Truesdale, but there are. Th that's correct. The Sway business is in Warrington. Yeah. We developed it. It's I, I don't. It's not called Warrington Industrial Park anymore, is it? What is it? But there are. A, I, I know there's two, the trash transfer place, the soy sauce place, um, 
And I think we're over third. Yeah. Otherwise, the other ones. This will so click yes. 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 Okay. Now, what did you say for number nine? Public. Public. Lighting good. So all good. What about rail? But then lighting and rail. Oh, sorry, I hit that with it. Lighting and rail don't don't exist. They're on the other side of the road. As far as the rail and the lighting, um, I haven't driven through at night. I'm not sure if the lighting is poor there or not. I don't think there's a light back there by the soy facility, as far as a public street light. So does not exist. Doesn't exist. It's the lighting. Well, he doesn't know. I haven't driven no. through at night. section if that's all right employment skilled jobs as an opportunity it was a three I think the opportunity is a four okay. <clears throat> I think we have a lot of opportunity we don't have the workforce okay. the opportunity is certainly there so four for skilled that, that's You look at Holland, they're con they continue to look for uh, skilled welders along with Warrant and Steel. I know Gary Carter's always looking for certified welders. Uh, so, yeah, there's opportunities that are there. In fact, they're trying to work with uh, as community college. You get some help out here in that direction. So I think there's... Non-skilled. So non-skilled. Four on that. Four. One. Four on non-skilled too. Then. Yes. I think there are a lot of opportunities out there. There are a lot of them are unfilled. Yes. The job, the job training. I know that we offer job training through the job center, which is probably where the three came from. Um, there are grant opportunities for on-the-job training. Uh, several. We're trying to work with welders as well for that too. Probably keep it at three. Good with the three? Three. Okay. And almost finished. The top five priority needs in the community. Me so, with, to me, one of the top ones is youth, all the other youth services. Okay. You have to rank them in order? Or? Yes, we need a ranking order. If, if, I, if I could, I, I made a couple of notes. I think workforce training somehow needs to be one of those top five, however you want to rank it. Uh, you had it, infrastructure improvements that could include the sidewalks and um, connectivity around the streets. If it's elderly and youth um, or drainage or I know that one that we've been asked about is housing opportunities and that would be for those that don't have houses. That it is a major need. So, so what was the second one? Or oh, I'm sorry. Two, five or After workforce training? After workforce training, so what would that be considered? Uh, life skill training. Workforce would be the um, welding and skills like that for job training. But it could be general job training. It could be. And so somebody who comes to a place and doesn't, or comes and trying to be job coached, not necessarily even on a job site. Sure. Okay. Soft skills. Yeah. The healthcare is critical. people with their health and making healthy decisions. If you're, taking, if you're taking notes, I'm going to leave this open until we finally get discussed when sure. rank it and sure. we'll all rights what we agree upon. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I just no, no, wanted to clarify that for everybody. It's, it's, this is a difficult one, I know. Um, what about infrastructure? Could we have a category of infrastructure improvements? I think that would take care of your sidewalks or roads or. Oh, 
project. Yeah, there's a lot of projects. I would put that as a lower, as a lower one maybe, but I think some of them. Buck brought up higher on the. Okay. On the list. Last time was water treatment, and I don't know if that is. I don't think priority that's a priority or? because it's already we took care of water. Okay. Did we not? So you're talking water treatment, so there is no water treatment. Okay. It's wells, so the okay. wording doesn't really exist. Okay. For water treatment. Housing. Waste wastewater would be. Wastewater. If that's what you're. Sometimes, we don't need waste water. Right, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes that's you can't right. agree. Well, when did we do this last? 2004. Yeah, so back then it would have been an issue. But it's not now. But it's not so now. It shouldn't be. Okay. So was it necessary to fill out all five, or do we go down to K next? or And then can we jump back up, or how do we want to do this? Well, typically we talk about the project, which is the community facility, and it is for groups that assist other people or a community facility for nonprofits, or uh, facility options for those groups. And so if it's not one of the top five, then we have to go to L and list why it's not one of the top five needs for the community. Isn't the objective really, you know what the proposal is? Sure. Isn't the objective to see if it fits in the top five? Correct. So if the, if the project is private, is So, I, see what I mean? Sure. So, general, generally speaking, then, um, housing opportunity, increased housing opportunities could include some others, but then uh, improvements to. Well, but increased housing opportunities doesn't necessarily mean building houses. It may be helping with budgeting so people can get in a house. If you want to finish J, if you we, I I've, I have downhill, elderly, uh, youth, healthcare, infrastructure, workforce training. And increased housing opportunities. Um, yeah, I group those together. All agree on that? What was your top one, Chad? Well, are these in? Are these were not in order. Oh, okay. These were not in order. The first so one I mentioned was elderly youth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it's you guys. You can rank them. Rank the top five. Whatever Probably you think, think the top is, one is. We collectively need to rank it as a group. Yes. Yes. So voice out your what you think of top priority out of the ranking that we have right now. Opportunities or city. Uh, it says youth and elderly services. That's the specific. Buy them or keep them separate. Well, they're combined on the worksheet. Combine so you gotta them. them. You got to keep them combined. What did you have that says? Well, Second. You can separate them. Can you repeat the six? Uh, uh, youth and service. Youth services, elderly services. Those are combined uh, as one. one. Is one. Yeah. <coughs> Infrastructure improvements. Health care. Workforce training. Housing opportunities. Housing opportunities. I think workforce training is critical. Critical. Okay. Where was health care? Was that a was that a three? I personally think it is. I mean that's just me. Oh, 
hospital here in town. Health. Uh, well, there's a greater need for other services that help people with their health, even though there's no... Get two left. What are they? Infrastructure or housing? Housing is Housing four. Infrastructure five. I think. Good. Okay. All right. I will get a clean copy of this with all of the answers and then send it to. Brandy, if that's okay, as part of the needs assessment. And then we will take a copy of the sign-in sheet from this. And that's, sorry, I know it's been a long, a long oh, so process. We'll have the census numbers. K&L. Oh, and K&L. Who completes that? Is that something your office completes it? Yeah, we'll complete with, that. With the, with the conversation between the applicant and the city? nothing further on the public hearing. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Anybody else who would like to speak specifically on the community developed block land, this is a public hearing. You can step to the mic, state your name, and you'll have five minutes to speak just on this topic. Not seeing anyone, we'll go ahead and bring the public hearing section for the Warrenton Board of Aldermen meeting pertaining to the Community Development Block Grant to a close. We'll go ahead and open the regular meeting for May 21st, 2019 for the Warrenton Board of Aldermen. Please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. section would be hearing from the public. We ask that you come to the podium, state your name, and you'll, we'll give you five minutes to speak on what topic you'd like to discuss. Okay. They're here for different sections within the meeting. You can, you can bring, that, bring that mic down. I was there told I could have brought it to her, but we Sorry. weren't told that. That's right. Um, Just state your name. And my name is Tina James. I am from the First Ward. Uh, I'm here about the Aquatic Center. The prices are varied. It's a mess on the website. It gives different information for different people. It tells you, uh, like you're 21 years old or younger and your house is a child. Then on a separate one, it says 16 and older. They have to have a state ID or a water bill so we don't know which one it is we're paying 68% increase for a fourth child that we don't even have we're not allowed to use that pass as stated by this letter you can't give it to somebody and you can't use it as a guest pass so it's useless so you're paying for something for a service that's never going to be rendered I'd like to figure out what to do with that. She, my daughter, who's in the back, she wanted to give her pass to her best friend, Lauren Jergensmeyer. I'm sure you guys are familiar with her mother, <laughs> being a teacher here forever. Um, we are told she couldn't do that. She can't have a guest. So, I mean, there are people that are just not seniors. You've got people that are 30 years old that don't have kids. People that do not fit the nuclear family of four kids. We only have three. I'm almost 50 years old. I'm not having another child. <laughs> oh, can I just ask you a question? So, I mean, you're, you're, in essence, your complaint is that you bought four spots and you can't use four spots. Your it, complaint isn't the website is screwy. That's, I mean, it may be, it may not it's be. It's misleading. But that's not what you're talking about. But it, whether it's misleading or not, you bought four 
tickets or whatever under your passes. Totally option. Totally options. And you didn't have an option to buy three. You just had an option to buy four as a family. And you're saying, I'm spending extra money. It's cost me more to have a ticket that I can't use. And so when you try to use it for a fourth person, they say it's not. That's the issue, right? Yes. Okay. You can't use it at all. You can't use it for a guest, and you can't use it for a pass for a season for somebody. I would like to have that fixed somehow, you know, either saying I can use it for somebody outside my household or it is a guest pass, and that should be relevant for everybody that lives in Warren County because I can guarantee you I'm not the only person having this issue. Not everybody has four children or more. So it seems like if the city were to consider fixing it, if it needs a fix, the solution would be one would be to allow the pass to be used by multi-people because it doesn't increase the total number of people in the park because if, if your family of four comes, it's a family of four. It doesn't matter who the, which part. So if you have, so you have that or the city should be selling three, the family of three packets so that the person who's, who's just using three wouldn't have to overpay. I mean, I think those are potential. If we, if, the, if this is a, if we view this as a problem, those are potential solutions. Uh, I think we need to talk about. Yeah, I, I think Gary, the way I understand it, and you know, obviously the first year is somewhat of a test balloon to, to work the kinks out. The parks, you know, pool's not been open a year. Um, is that it's a family pass that I think is up to four. Right, so people. it's it's a discount instead of buying three individual passes it's a family discount with up to four passes that are included so it's not like you know you're not paying for four you're paying for a family discount that has up to four people in your family so I, what I would suggest is we could look at it, different pricing structures for other pools which I think is what we initially looked at and uh, see if there's some alternatives that seem to be working in other communities and bring that back. So what you're and saying basically, if you bought four individual passes, that would be more expensive than buying a family pass for four. Oh, if you bought. If you bought a, yes. If you bought, yes. But if you would have bought three individual passes, was that more than buying the family package? Or. Got to come up to the mic. So they got to be able to hear 550 you. for a family? It's 500. If we were to buy it for just the three of us, it would be 200 per adult, which is $400, and then 150 for the child. The family of four is $375. And actually, you are incorrect because on the website, I took the screenshots. It, not that one. Um, it states two adults, two children. And this is on where you buy the pass. Well, we can get that clarified, but what it's intended to be is a family discount but I, pass. But I'm just telling you what it is now. Right. And, well, and you guys suggested that this website, that will yeah. obviously be something we need to look at. But the intent is a family pass, so the family pass is a discount. So it sounds like the family pass is cheaper than the... Three, three individual right. passes, but but yeah, we can we can look at other cities. I'm that's part of what we did when we looked at the pricing structure to keep it in line and consistent with other aquatic centers. Obviously, it's not a money maker. Um, it's just trying to get as much accessibility as possible. So my suggestion would be let us look at it, bring it back to you, and give you. This guys is typically what we do. We usually won't give you an answer until we do the research through <laughs> other cities and see if there's other options that are available. That doesn't mean we won't get back to you. We can get you, take down your information and get back to you as soon as we do the yeah, research. I was just looking out. for some kind of resolution that she can either be able to use a guest pass when she wants to have a friend go swimming with her or let her friend you know, go up there, take the picture, and it's her ID for the season, and they, were, sh they weren't allowing either. So, so, so and this question, uh, since I don't have a family, uh, <laughs> if I went up there to get a pass, do they, ask, so let's say you go up and you bring a friend along. So when they take that, do they require something from the city for you and you? Do they require a school ID for her? Do a, so how, how does that work? I mean, <coughs> if the, in theory, a dishonest person could bring a fourth kid in, even if there's not there. I mean, we had a driver's license, but all they asked for, well, I What do they was, ask for the kids? What do they ask for for the kids? For the kids, though. Under 16, nothing. nothing. If they're above 16, they ask them for a state ID. 16 or older, or it says, or a water all bill, which I don't know any ID. kid that has a water bill at 16. <laughs> well, we 
we had state ID to be our driver's license. No, no, no I, I'm not concerned about you. I'm concerned about the kid. No. So, so did they ask for a photo ID of the, for the child? No, I think you just listed on the application. No, below the age of 13 or 16. 16. So in theory, you could have made up a child. Yeah, well, she didn't tell us at the time. I know. I, I'm, just saying it's I'm not dishonest about no, it. I was asked who to lives be. in my house. I, I don't want you to be, but I just was trying to figure out what the process is. Well, yeah, because in the event of emergency, if something would happen, like I, I, she would I, fall I, and bump her head, she, they well, can't use that. me. They have to call her mother. Well, let me say, <laughs> let me, I don't know if this thing's working. Okay. Let me step in for a moment and say um, these, these prices that you've got, and I, I understand the outside thing, but this is also for a resident who lives here mm -hmm. there is a different price range for somebody who lives outside and that's kind of where the, it gets muddled and it can be a little choppy because they don't live inside if they live outside then we're going to have a lot of people saying so why can't I get a discount rate for my family member that lives inside the town and, and it, it, it gets a little choppy that's why we try and do homework mm -hmm. for what a lot of other people do so we offer a consistent option that is good for not only you guys, but good for anybody that right, you may I consider understand. the options for. So it, it, it can get a little difficult on a lot of that thing. A lot of county the versus city resident. Correct. Right. I understand that. I mean, good thing she lives in the city, but there you go. <laughs> you know? there you go. And we knew we knew going forward with this, this being the first year, we were going to have some glitches, and this is this is one. So uh, you know. We'll, <coughs> I'm sure it's going to pop we'll up try again. To try to address <laughs> it. And see what we do is refer these questions back to staff, and then staff comes up homework. with a recommendation to the board and how they think they should change the situations that come up. All right. Basically, she just left us with no recourse up there. She, they, they claim that they're a third-party entity and that you are, are responsible for the rules and regulations, and exactly. that's where we would have to get our answers. Yeah, that's I mean, that's exactly right. And I'm not sure if you watched the news yesterday. Uh, they did a big, big article about one of the local um, lifeguards or would be that provide services to a lot of municipalities went out of business. Yeah. Same, I mean, Midwest Pool Company, who we use, has not gone out of business, luckily, but the, one of the other ones has, and a lot of municipalities are scrambling right now to try and find a way to open up their pool because they don't have a service that's there yet. So um, so they are correct. So we do different use it from outside when we were growing and, up. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. No problem. And like yeah, I said, we'll if you want to leave your information before the meeting, then, I mean, I know where you guys live, but staff would need to know so they can get a hold of you. Mayor, I have a question regarding sure. that. Um, I got an email from an individual regarding uh, changes that have been made to classes and things at the pool. So what you're saying is Midwest Pool is the individual that's making all those changes right. to aerobics and, right. oh. and no one has no one has any recourse. <laughs> well, it's not that they don't have recourse. Of course, um, like Terry Thorne and, and I think believe Brandy stays in constant speaks or talks with them about you know the way the pool's being managed. Um, I think Brad does as well. Um, but like classes and stuff, yeah, they do kind of set the guidelines. But it doesn't mean that they don't listen. They will listen to our uh, what we may want to see changed, or if we're getting feedback from the public. That's who we usually give to them. And Randy, I'm going to talk with you after the meeting then because there are some concerns about changes made to aerobic programs that um, seem... Do you know what those changes that they're talking about? Because I, I know I um, do. they were having some issues with the Monday-Friday class, Okay, uh, Wednesday-Friday class. My understanding is that the pool is changing the aerobics classes from 8 to 9, which, um, and from two times a week to three times a week, and the duration from four weeks to two weeks. And this individual, as well as others, are concerned, first off, a lot of the women that take advantage of these classes would prefer that they start earlier in the morning and then you know no no one wants to uh, have to go three times a week and shorten it to two weeks sure and <coughs> so, we did put that out there for the three times a week and I did get some folks that were saying they wanted that two days back we did implement that back in so they are going to still have that option of two days a week. The reason we're kind of changing the hours and stuff is because summer is coming. 
so we're opening the outdoor pool and we have we're going to have more kids coming and so we're trying to fluctuate all those hours but they have re-implemented those two days a week that okay. a lot of those ladies are going to okay but yes. is it still going to be at 9 a.m as so opposed that's to eight. eight it's at eight. oh it is back yes. to eight. Oh, great yes. okay Thank so you can you let so them know that is okay. still available. Thank you very much. It, it is very hard to understand because what they have on the website for open days and then what's on the door is completely different because it'll say open swim and then you get there and it's closed for this class, that class, or that class. You really don't know when open swim is or, you know, when it's for seniors or when it's for, you know, swim classes. I mean, I know it's... I wish I would kind of just like peel it off the door. So no, and that's, that's something we can be diligent about is asking them to yes. take it down and put up a temporary sign. So if we're going to go through these right. growing pains or what, what be it, um, we can we can make adjustments. There's like times we'd like to go up and swim just in the morning. Kids are in sure. school, you know, all the kids aren't out yet. You know, and Brady, I don't know how accessible it is, but and I think it's we like, can no, also start posting things on the website. Going on. <laughs> there's not any open swim in the mornings. That's all river walking and lap swimming. And the earliest that a open swim opens right now is like at four o'clock. Most of them during but school year, but when think, school's out, it's starting at noon. I think what we can extend to Midwest Pool Management is if they're going to make changes, they need to kind of advise us first so we can give a little heads up of changes on the website as well as a yes. temporary board. We can until we become more permanent and settled into what we're going to do, we can make that happen. So. I'm going to tell you, I absolutely do not, and I have a child that works there. I, I have no idea, just to be honest. I don't know if they say, like, you know, it's $30. I, I think there is an added fee, but if you are a member, because you can, I think you can also sign up, if I remember right, you can sign up without being a member at the pool, at the pool, but it costs this much. If you are a member, you get a discounted rate through Midwest. No? Okay, never mind. I'm wrong on that. So, uh, it's Randy, a flat rate, no matter There you what. go. It's a flat rate. I'm just going to be quiet because I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to muddle my way through it. Thank you. Uh, still open for the hearing from the public. Anybody will go ahead and bring the hearing from the, from the public to a close and open up for the Board of Aldermen comments. I, as the interim rep for the, or our rep for the uh, chamber meetings, I attended the chamber meeting last Tuesday. Very good in informational meeting we had. We heard from uh, Joe Gildahouse with the county commissioners. Uh, who uh, laid out some of the changes he's hoping to make with uh, with regards to the county interacting with municipalities better. And uh, I think they're going to be, we have some good changes to look forward to there. Also heard from uh, Kevin Harrison, Sheriff Harrison, on uh, which you guys are, I'm sure, aware of, but the change has taken place at the, at the jail. And uh, he's invited everybody to come over and, visit and take a look at it. Uh, uh, not to stay, just to visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to stay, just, but uh, I think he's, he's excited about some of the uh, things going on there. Uh, we also heard from uh, uh, from Mayor Chris Watson, Truesdale, he brought us up to date on a lot of things that are happening there, and also uh, Alderman Miller represented uh, Mayor Schluter and uh, gave an update on uh, all the things that were going on with the uh, city of Warrington. So, like I said, a very, uh, very good meeting. Uh, like I say, information, a lot of information came out, and I think the uh, uh, chamber appreciates it. Uh, when you get that information, I think the uh, businesses they represent and everything, I think they, they like to hear what's... Uh, what's going on, so pretty much all I had. The only thing I have is, I was wondering, I noticed that the board was invited by Mike Daniels of the Warren County Emergency Management to attend uh, their workshop. Is anyone planning to attend? That's
it's also a board meeting day. It starts at 9 and goes till 3. So I was wondering who was, who um, of us was planning to attend. I certainly am planning to attend. I attended one. Um, it was EOC, actually. Um, my chief was actually there as well. It was, it was a while back. Um, I had asked them to, because he had mentioned some things with the which we had talked about, the ISOs and what be it, to get a little more information compiled before we present it to the board um, because of what he said we needed to kind of be involved in and what classifications we needed to be ranked in. And it was kind of a, I don't want to say it was an argument, but it was kind of a debate on what level we need to be at and before I approached the board. But, I mean, this workshop may show some clarification, so I'd encourage everybody to go. But I, I wanted more clarification before we came here, and, and then we get this. We got to be at 900 level, or you know, 400. Okay. I wanted a little more clarification down on paper to be able to right. present it to everybody. We got a muddled mess, so. But the, the, that may be exactly. He may discuss some of that at that workshop as well. Mike kind of brings things up. He's good at what he does, but yes. he brings things up randomly sometimes. Anybody else gonna? What time does it start? Starts at nine, nine in the morning. It's over at three, what day? and we need, it's the same day as the board meeting, June fourth. Um, and they expect a response by the end of the month. I have a real job that I do also. <laughs> so I don't know if I make it or not. Okay. I'll try. Just wondering who was going to be there. Maybe our representative there. Oh, you're going to give me a look after that comment. I know you are. <laughs> I can be the representative. Anything else from anybody? No. So I'm going to extend my apology and my gratitude to Alder Miller. Um, thank you for filling in. That was kind of a last minute thing, but as um, Alderman Chill already commented, um, I do work over at the Sheriff's Department on a full-time basis, and uh, there were some hiccups that came in line for the jail, and I was unable to attend, and that was unfortunate. Um, but uh, the expansion is working out well, and it was unfortunate that day. So thank you for filling in, but sorry, I apologize. It was a last-minute issue. Not a problem. So on to election of board president. like to nominate Mike Shaw Harvey for that. I'd like to nominate Gary Miller. Other nominations? I believe in accordance to Robert's rules, we take each nomination and go through on a voting status. Since there's two, you can just pull the board um, for who they vote for, and then um, you know between the two candidates and the one with the most candidate most wins, or if it's a tie, if there would have been three, it would have been we would have gone one by one. So you can just uh, you pull can the have board. yeah, ask Brandy to pull the board mayor and, and uh, go from there. Okay. Alderman Schultz. I'll second uh, Mike Shalharvey. Alderman Shalharvey? Yes, you can vote for yourself or vote that? for Gary. You can vote for yourself or vote for Gary if you... Alderman Dreyer? Mr. Shalharvey? Alderman Ock? Alderman Miller. Miller. Alderman Deloy. Shell Harvey. Mayor can accept the vote and announce the president of the board. Well, by majority of the vote, Mr. Shell Harvey or Alderman Shell Harvey was. Four to two, is that correct? Okay. So the elect for board president, I believe, Alderman Joe Harvey was the top vote, I guess is what you would call it. 
Sorry. Congratulations. Discussion topic. I didn't even think we had one. Well, we did have one. I think it was more to the public hearing section that we had a. <laughs> I'm looking at. This is for the WDA. Oh. So, who I believe we have a representative here to speak to us on. So, so the discussion topic you're basically saying we're not going to do. I, we didn't have a topic to bring up. Oh, okay. So I, I was kind of tongue-in-cheek saying that we had, did have a, a further discussion on the pool. Yeah. <laughs> pool yes, after the discussion topic, tongue-in-cheek, it kind of slips by me. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was unexpected, but I think we had a pretty good discussion on that. And I think it, it was kind of productive, actually. So sorry about that, ma'am. Casey Blondin with Wharton Downtown Association to answer any questions you have about our application <laughs> to shut the street down on June 15th. Furling Fest, so we're requesting it to be shut down, I think, from 2 or 12, I, I can't remember. Okay, so the, the event runs from 4 to 7, so we're given two hours before for people to get in and set up, and then an hour afterwards to get everybody out of the way. 2 to, two to 8. 2 to 8 is the shutdown. The event is 4 to 7. Uh, that was my <laughs> question, and I'll take that question. What? I'm going to be out of town. So oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Florida. Is that far well, then enough? Well, needed to wear down there. Is that so far enough? <laughs> the question by uh, Alderman Schultz was, who would, and I'm not going to even try and pronounce it. I always screwed up every time I say it. Lederhosen's. Anybody going to wear them? We also have a pie eating contest. If anyone wants to get into the pie eating contest, <laughs> we're going all the way back to the '80s when they actually did that back then. So Great. you can get your face messy, win a prize. They see how many vendors do you have oh, lined now? up so far? I've lost count, honestly. I've got someone else, uh, actually, Rochelle Wilch with Martin Funeral Homes, handling all the vendors this year. So I would say 20 that I've seen come across my desk that I've filtered to her. I'm not sure what she's got in her great. office. I know they are working yeah, very they really are. hard to pull this together. And we're so doing a 5K great. in the morning, too, if anyone mm -hmm. wants to run. Scott? Walk run. So I think I was asked um, about the Will there be beer flowing? No, not uh, outdoors. Oh, that was a serious question no. they asked. Um, I know Deerfield is going to have some craft beer inside. Um, we don't have any beer vendors outside. No. Will they be able? <laughs> question along that line. And I don't know. Maybe this ours is a, 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 another license. But since they've got the patio out there, and he's got a license for that, will they be able to be on the front sidewalk? With beer? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. I don't think it can be on the sidewalk anywhere. We ready? do have food vendors that are going through the county health department to get all of their stuff taken care of, but not anyone that's selling liquor or, or beer. So it's still a family friendly if they event. Can be out there with beer or if they are selling beer? Not if they can sell it out there, but if they have somebody. Because, like I say, they have the patio outside, but if they take a beer outside, can they come out and walk the front sidewalk and that? Or they that's, a, that's a city ordinance. Chris, do we allow open container to be on the streets of Warrington? No, <clears throat> no we don't. Um, but there has been times in the past when we've closed the street when you have allowed it, like for, um, I hate to use the phrase, catch the glow. and uh, um, well, The Autumn Fest, we allow it, don't we? Yeah, yeah, where you guys basically you give a, we tied it to the licenses where there's designated air. It, it's pretty complicated, but we like basically enclose the street so it's actually an enclosed area and not open. Um, but if, is, is the plan to allow it, open container? No, not okay. our event. Just so to land the restaurants? For them who want, if they wanted to, they just have to put that as part of which request. One is 
Yeah, for the but that we we created a special license for beer sales on the streets or outside or whatnot. So, um, but if we if you guys want to allow open container and people walking, which it doesn't sound like the sponsors necessarily do, um, we, we don't have to construct the because I don't think set up that way. I don't think a physical barrier exists during the fall festival. People are just everywhere to have a beer. Did so Terry lie to me? No. I mean, there's no, no there, there's like we we I, I can't remember Brandy what we did, but we did something to make it so it was an open container on the designated areas, and I don't remember what we did, but we did something I just can't recall off the top of my head. We started doing it back with Catch the Glow, and um, it's like a, a it's like <clears throat> through the state, it's like a consumption yeah a consumption. And license. then we create basically yeah. the whole yeah, street created. and the sidewalks as the service area so it doesn't affect our open container but if you're outside it can affect it but we just won't do that maybe one year we could look into gonna, that but right now we're I, not at that point i do believe she's not here to stick up for herself I'll, I'll step in and tell you that's either a misunderstanding or you misheard but it's <laughs> never a lie from terry well if, if the mayor's gonna where is later hosing down on main street i, will, I think I he'd do want that. to start your beer with it <laughs> I guess it'll be water. <laughs> well, family friendly, mostly kid, kid and family oriented. Motion we allow the street closure for the Fruling Fest on June fifteenth. Glad you said that because I was going to muddle my way through saying that Fruling Fest. I can never get it right. Motion, motion made by Alderman Shawry, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Shawry. Yes. Alderman Dyer. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Thanks, Stacy. Okay, next, we'll have a resolution 327 funding for the CDBG program, which will be the Community Development Block Grant. This is the resolution that we have to do for the block grant for their Form K that we have to have a vote on. So, if there's no questions, I'll enter entertain a, a motion to approve the signing of Resolution 327. Moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Ock. Second by Alderman Deloy. Roll call vote. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Schulharvey? Yes. Before we move on, Mayor, I sure. think we should probably share the anticipated schedule that's in the letter here, because I know I get a number of people saying, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? I mean, so, <clears throat> so the letter says that the right-of-way plans are to be submitted by the end of July and approved by mid-September, uh, and I'm assuming that's this year. Uh, the right-of-way acquisition is estimated to be 14 months to complete, which is the time frame for the city to go around and try to get the right-of-ways permissions. Uh, then the draft of the final plan is to be September 20, uh, September 2020, and then the project will be offered up for bid on 2020 with construction starting in the summer of or the spring of uh, 2021. So this project. It's moving down the tracks. It's still a long way off. If, if certainly, if you're one walking in the ditches along, there are concerned about that. But moving, so a lot of these schedules are not set up by the city, but they're set up by the grant process and what what the state allows us or wants us to do. So appreciate it. That's not with the CDBG grant. I'm sorry. That's not with the resolution 327. That's with the MTFC loan. Oh well, well, but I mean that applies to sidewalks. No. No, the CDBG grant, this resolution 327, is for the Agape. I'm looking at the wrong. Yeah, we still got a couple more before we get to okay, that. Okay, well, my comments apply to a <laughs> yes. future item. Thank you, though. Write that down. Write that down. I appreciate all that. I think I, got put, to, oh, I, think I got put to sleep on the first public hearing, to be honest with you. I think I had to get up twice. I think I just walked by and I blamed Michelle every time. It's your fault, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the next one. Yes, All right. that was great. <laughs> I'll do, when we get there, I'll just say whatever I say. Yeah, exactly. Yes, <laughs> the previous statements. The previous statements. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. So the resolution 327, the approval of the signing of resolution 327 was first uh, put up by Alden Knox, second by Alden Dulloway, and passed with a 6-0 vote. So next we will have, uh, we will hear from Director of Operations, Brandy Walters. The first thing that I have is the health insurance waiver payments. As most of you know, um, we have employees that opt out of health insurance every year, and those folks, we um, help them pay for their insurance elsewhere. We pay them half of what we would have paid for a single coverage. So this year, our total reimbursement is $30,533.76, which is half of what we would have paid if we had them on our health insurance. And that's for nine individuals, correct? Correct. Questions on those? I'll entertain a motion to approve the health insurance waiver payments as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Sharvey, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shelharvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. The next thing that I have is the MTFC loan. What? Mr. Rock said. What he said. Yes. <laughs> as far as the scheduling. Um, it no, it did not change. <laughs> we still yeah, don't have. You have to be careful when you're punching your screen. <laughs> <laughs> we still don't have sidewalks till 2021. Well, yeah. That doesn't change, unfortunately. If it would have, I'd make the error many times. Project done. <laughs> Yes. So this, everybody knows that we have gotten our approval for the loan. Um, it's going to be a 10-year loan, approximately, or approximately 10 years, unless we pay extra on it to pay it off early without a penalty. It's $133,804 annually, and this will pay for our portion, a portion of the sidewalks, of course, that's going down 47. Like you said, it's not going to happen overnight, so we do have a schedule in process. There is an ordinance later in the agenda for signing. Excellent. So, let's see if I screw up one other comment. So, this is being paid out of general fund. Right. So, typically, we do a lot of projects. There, are, you know, there's a taxing district or things like that. But this one is just out of general fund. So, there is no tax increase or obligation relative to this. And I think that's also important for the public to understand. How are you doing that one? Hey, great. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions on that? There again, it will be a bill later on in the agenda. Yes. All right. The next thing I have is for the Agape, the um, CDBG grant for us to do to be the, um, yes, the grantee for their application. So I just need approval for us to go forward with that and have all those documents signed for their application. I, th I think we this was earlier we discussed this. So is there any uh, questions on this? All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, for us to apply for the CBG or CDBG for grant funds on behalf of Agape Ministry of Warren County. I'll move. Oh, oh, oh. It's gonna, both of you guys said at the same time, let's go first. One wanna do it and then one second. So moved. Miller, do you want to second that then? So, motion was made by Alderman Delloy, signed by Alderman Miller. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Delloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Schilharvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Anything further, Brittany? Excellent. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Public Works Director Guy Jeevers. Unfortunately, he had to step out because his water alarms were going off, so he had to go take care of that. So the water so, alarms are going off, but otherwise everything is going storm. great. Oh, I'm sorry, the storms are. <laughs> so he the is. North he has. Okay, so things aren't going water. great, but we'll handle that. Yes. <laughs> well, we do know we have water. <laughs> he's always capable, and, and you know what? Honestly, with him not being here, he's always dedicated and hardworking. So. Um, we just appreciate the efforts he puts forth, just like now, stepping out of a meeting to handle the situation. So, All right, next we'll hear from the Building Commissioner, Mike Ross. Good evening, Mayor and Board. You have before you my monthly report. Stay dry. Yes, 
question. I, was, I guess the only thing I was surprised that there's five new residence permits. Is that my reading that right? Just in one month, but there's been nothing else before that. Do I have that right? That's permits closed. All permits. So where are we at? It's seven, eleven, and, and uh, six. Correct. Okay. That means some have been completed. Homes. Of course, they could have been from a prior period too. Oh, well, they're probably from this current year. Okay. okay. Yes. All those homes started, or when they are issued a permit, are they usually generally started right away, or is there some time a delay? Well, we've had some delays with the rain this year, right. um, and the snow a little bit held us back some. But other than that, usually within a week, okay. they're breaking ground. Anybody driven in Ward 1 lately? Me? Yes, over by you. There's exactly what I was trying to lead <laughs> oh into. Oh, my gosh. There's more holes being dug in the ground. <laughs> but it looks uh, great. That, I mean, it really does. It I does. Think. I like the, all the homes popping yes, up. Yes, it's very exciting. I have one that's straight up from me, right on the corner. I was amazed that they got that. It's probably full of water now. I don't know. I feel sorry for the builders right now that are trying to get these things started. Actually pulled back there and um, I guess it's Navajo or in that area. Mm -hmm. And just, it's, if anybody hasn't driven back there, it's almost like the Bruni Park area, guys. It's, they're popping up overnight. It's, uh, it, it was amazing to see. It really is. Have you been back there lately? Oh, at, every day. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. I'm sure you are. It's yes. nice, isn't it? I mean, the way they're, they're coming along with them. They got a lot of crews there working hard. He's got two full framing crews, two full foundation crews. And then he's got finished crews, and he's just he's just chasing them down the street. They're plugging, they're plugging away. If you haven't driven down there, I, I just suggest take a time and just it only takes five or ten minutes. But when you drive by, you'll see what we're talking about. Any other questions? Thanks, Mike. Welcome, sir. Next, we'll hear from Chief Police Larry Eller. Good evening. I'll just have one item for you tonight, and that's my monthly report. on that one. Oh, I think we'll let you off to hook easy tonight. Next will be bills to ordinance, so I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 22-19. Moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Elloy, seconded by Alderman Shell Harvey. Bill number 22-19, an ordinance authorizing execution of a direct loan agreement and promissory note between Missouri Transportation Finance Corporation, the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission, and the City of Warrenton, Missouri, for the purpose of constructing, constructing sidewalks along North Highway 47. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill number 22-19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Dyer. Bill number 22-19, an ordinance authorizing execution of a direct loan agreement and promissory note between Missouri Transportation Finance Corporation, the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission, and the City of Warrington, Missouri, for the purpose of constructing sidewalks along North State Highway 47. Roll call vote. Alderman Delloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Schilharvey? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Bill passes. Bill passes 6-0. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Shell Harvey. Seconded by Alderman Dyer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We are so adjourned.